today, I'm gonna tell you why co-working is the cure for isolated entrepreneurs. I'm sure as sm all the small business owners in the audience will agree, working alone sucks. <laughs> And it can get pretty lonely if your business requires you to just sit at home, toiling away behind your computer screen every day. But co-working is the cure because it encourages you to get up, get out the house, and get active. If you've never felt connected to a community, you're, you suddenly have one. And co-working communities are usually housed in some cool places where you'll want to hang out. But you'll quickly figure out that the magic just isn't found in the place. It's found in the people. They're really the cure. They're passionate trailblazers who aren't afraid to have tough conversations that deepen their understanding and inspire change. And the best part is they're not just talkers, they're doers. And I'm gonna take a moment to tell you more about this place. Here's a quick story. My coworkers tell me that I'm really good at encouraging others <laughs> and building communities. So when I asked how, one guy shared the most memorable thing I ever said to him was when he approached me at the coffee bar shortly after we opened. He asked me a question. He wanted to talk about some recent event involving race. Not long after he started talking, he said I stopped him, politely of course, and I smiled. Then I looked him dead in the face and said, you know, Kyle, we can have this conversation, but unless you're actually willing to do something about the problems we discuss, I'd rather just get on with my day. Now, I was shocked he remembered that conversation. I don't recall making such a statement, but it definitely sounds like something I would say. <laughs> He told me that day was memorable because even though our chat was both was completely unrelated to what both of us were doing, it reminded him to take action, to do something, not just sit around and talk, analyze, or complain. And as I reflected on his story, I got to thinking, he's a doer. That's why I said it to him in the first place. So listen, I've been in too many rooms with folks who just want to talk and talk around problems at that. Listening has its place, but sometimes it's hard to pin down those that are actually willing to do something more than they sit around and talk, in part because they're so busy, but those are the folks that we really need. They're the ones that have the skills required to solve the problems that we face. For, li for a living, I'm fortunate to do work that I'm really passionate about. I build communities. Right now I run a co-working studio, but I've been doing work like this for years. I love fostering new relationships and partnerships, volunteering on teams and doing work for organizations that serve people. I also, it's also what I do for fun when I have a choice of how I spend my time because I really care and I wanna see a change. Thankfully, I'm not alone. Yet many of us doers have slowed down. Until we had a co-working space, that process of taking action was more complicated than it should have been. It was hard to find meeting places, and marketing is exhausting. Folks were getting burnt out before they even got started, and the worst part is that in a small town, you get discouraged very quickly if no one shows up in support of your ideas. But recently, I was reminded why co-working makes life easier for us doers. It all started in 2012. Our local chamber of commerce partnered with Purdue University and a few other organizations in the area to bring in a consultant. Together, they analyzed the quality of life in Lafayette and made over 50 pages worth of recommendations for ways that we could improve our town. Two years later, it doesn't even seem like we've scratched the surface, and people are slowly realizing just how much work goes into what those consultants called funkifying a community. <laughs> for some, it's overwhelming, but for those like me, it's work that instantly feels worthwhile. Remember, I'm a doer, and an impatient one at that. So when the city, the county, and the public library decided they wanted to transform an 80-year-old building into a co-working studio, to me, that said they were calculated risk takers, and they were tired of waiting as well. They decided to serve a fairly invisible group of people who maybe didn't need helping, but they knew that because those people were doers, the return on the investment would be huge, and it would make a dramatic impact in, those, in the lives of those who actually needed help. So as I prepared for this talk, I asked my members, how does co-working help you personally? 
As the manager of the space, I feel like I intrinsically know, but I wanted great stories that I could tell you today. And after speaking with a ton of folks, you're gonna be surprised at what I found. What I'm about to tell you at first is not that interesting, but I can assure you it's what you'll find at the core of the movements, really transforming Greater Lafayette into a national household name. What makes co-working so powerful is the way the space instantly organizes people. It gives doers and wannabe doers a place where they feel supported. They're not outcasts anymore. They finally belong. And that's the feeling that's going to make them want to stay and do more to get involved. To you, they may look like an average Joe from down the street, but in co-working spaces, they shine as brilliant college dropouts who started tech companies because they had guts and vision, and they didn't require a diploma from a top-tier school to do it. We've got what you would probably call some no-name hipsters, 3D printing drones <laughs> inside our space. But those drones feature technology that could potentially improve crop yields on farms worldwide not just in Indiana or even the USA. Just last week, we had over 50 people show up on the coldest, first snowy night of the year for an open mic. <laughs> they were mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, but they gathered together as strangers to share poetry and read short stories they wrote. Two even decided to grace us with their art by playing guitar as they sang. I hesitated to do this talk because these folks aren't needy in a traditional sense. They have food on their table. They don't feel prohibited from doing anything, but they know and now you know they're doing some really cool stuff, stuff that could pull them out of Indiana and take them to big cities, big, big cities in awesome places far away. The members of co-working spaces all across our country are doers. And unless our community steps up to support them, they'll leave. So I'm going to do what I can to keep them here. I want them to stay. Coworking is all about community. And to build a thriving community, you need to connect people. For example, in a coworking space, if you get a spark or idea, your fellow coworkers will help you build it and stoke the flame. As they talk to people within the facility and meet other doers like themselves, they're shocked to realize they aren't alone. They love learning that other people are around, building cool stuff too, and that they don't have to sit at home feeling isolated every day. Working from a shared office space also legitimizes their projects. <laughs> Suddenly, they have a place to meet outside of Starbucks. And you've got to be taken seriously when you're, you're, you're selling ideas that are going to make a sweeping global change. This is not the YMCA Rec League. This right here is the NBA. We're offering you a co-working space with over $2 million worth of upgrades. But sometimes, all that's not even necessary. They might just need you to believe in them and offer up something for free, like your network. That's something you can do for someone as soon as you walk out these doors today. You see, sharing information is powerful. And I've always been shocked by how thankful people are when, of my willingness to give my time or when I offer to pass along their contact information to more people who could use it. Small acts like that really brighten people's days. Coworking was our community's cure for isolated entrepreneurs. But what you may not realize is that entrepreneurs are doers and their gifts impact all of our lives in a number of valuable ways. However, most of us in this city will work for and build the visions of others. And that's important, but that doesn't mean you can't benefit from a shared office place too. I guarantee if the meeting is at our co-working studio, then you'll be glad to get involved. The space is beautiful, but co-working makes life easier for the doers, and that lowers stress for all around. So if you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, join a co-working studio. If you want to create and contribute to a community that's funky and inclusive, join a space and get involved. As cool as that quality of life report was, it was super long. <laughs> And you can't just let awesome ideas like that sit on a page. Coworking is part of the cure for entrepreneurs. But you still have to organize and take action. So your time is up. Stop talking and go do something. I challenge you to improve the quality of life for us all. Thank you.